going to do strawberry today, but you can just let, once you know the, the ratio of liquids to solids to pectin to lemon juice, you can just let your imagination run wild and make whatever comes into your head. Um, I have a lot of flavors that you would never even put together. Um, I have a new one, one of my new ones is strawberry PB&J, and there's peanut butter in it, and there's strawberry, and um, I use a lot of alcohol in mine, and um, so just anytime something pops in your head, you can find a way to make it. So it's not hard. The key here is sure gel package. Um, inside the sure gel package are instructions. And as long as you follow these instructions to a T, you should be good to go making jam. Um, they sell in single packs and double packs. I would advise, at least at the beginning, to buy a double pack because if something were to happen, you have more pectin. And pectin is the key to everything when you're making jams and jellies. Um, this is what makes it set up. This and, and the lemon juice, that's what makes everything set. Um, the lemon juice is a reaction to the pectin, and then that's how you get your, your thickened jam and jelly. Um, if, it, if it doesn't thicken up, just try adding a little more pectin, a little more pectin, a little more lemon juice, and a little more sugar. And there's instructions on here about if it doesn't set, how to, how to make it, see if it will. Sometimes you'll run into something that just will not set. And then you just have some syrup for your pancakes. So don't stress about it. Pretty easy. So we're going to start now. Now, it, on this list for strawberries, it says, um, I think it says eight cups of berries, five cups of processed berries. Now, you're probably like me, and you're going to find that maybe you have two or three quarts of strawberries, but that's not enough. You can always add water or another type of liquid to your mixture to get to your five cups. So you need, definitely need five cups of liquid. So let me go, I'm going to pour it in this pan here. Can I ask real quick, what, when you said a lot of alcohol, are you doing that for like different flavors or do you do it for more of a preservative? No, no, I use it time. to add flavor. Okay, so it's like any kind of like different I use flavor bourbon like... a lot. Okay. I run sometimes. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to put that on there, and I like to let it get warm and start to start to boil just a little bit, and then we'll add the pectin. And that's just strawberries and water that you... Yeah, I, kind of I, you can do I the old-fashioned way in the sieve, okay. but I use, I just use a food processor. Okay. I too much to try. That's a lot of work in the sieve. So. so you just put in the food processor, just and just use everything that's in there, and yeah, and then add whatever to make your five cups out. Yes, yes. Now I know some people don't like seeds. Again, I'm too lazy to take out seeds. But there's cheesecloth and whatever to do that. I don't do that, but. You're all welcome to do that if you'd like. So I'm just going to start out with this one packet of, again, the sure gel. And then, and for every, for all your fruits, there's different recipes on here. Um, it doesn't say you need lemon juice. But I'm going to be honest with you, I add lemon juice to just about every jam I make. Even if it's, I mean, maybe not something like lemon basil is what I make. Of course, I'm not going to add more to that. But if it doesn't have lemon in it, I'm going to add lemon juice to it. Because it just is an extra thing that's going to help you get your jam to set. And if it doesn't say, how much would you add? Um, I would add about a quarter of a cup. You don't want to add too much because you're going to get that um, too much liquid in there and it's, it's not going to set up. So we're starting to boil. I know you can't really see it, but we're starting to boil a little bit. Sorry, I don't use this too much. I, use, I have bulk that I buy. Give that a stir. It, it melts really fast 
wants the bearings and can do that. Did you want to add the lineages into your five pads? No, I just added extra. separately, yeah. Did you I use frozen fruit? Yes, yes. Yeah. I use frozen fruit often. I'll even buy fresh fruit when it's on sale. A lot of times sprouts have blackberries for like 99 cents. And I'll go buy a bunch of those and freeze them. And um, me strawberries actually were frozen. So. so if you were putting like bourbon or something like that in, how, how much do you? That counts as part of your five cups. As your five cups. Mm -hmm. Now once it comes to a boil, then we add our sugar in. Now for the, for the strawberries, it's seven cups of sugar. So it's five cups of liquid and seven cups of sugar. So that's what we got here. Now for jars, these jars have been sterilized. Everybody has their own way to do things. Some people use them right out of the box. Some people sterilize them. Some people wipe them down with vinegar. Um, if you were to make this, say you're going to make this batch, and this is what I do but for your home, for your own use, you do want a water bath for about 15 minutes. Um, and that's just putting it in the jars, sealed jars, in a big pot, and cover them with an inch of water, and let them boil for 15 minutes. Um, now, we're not going to do that to these t today. But um, if, you're good, if it's something you're going to eat right away or stick in your refrigerator, you don't really have to do that. But um, you do need to do it if you're going to keep it on your shelf. This will probably make nine jars, nine to ten. All right, it's boiling, so we're going to add the sugar now. Just kind of pour a little bit in and stir. Now, if you want to make it sugar free, uh, Sure Gel does have a no sugar pectin. Um, and you can use any of the sugar substitutes with that, a lot of the sugar substitutes, and then we have sugar free jam. I don't always have a lot of success with that, but it, it'll work. Now, could you use honey instead of sugar? No, not in these recipes because the, the, the sugar is part of the bulk, okay. and it, it absorbs the liquid and does part of that reaction to it. Um, make it gel. So you could use like Truvia or something like yes. that in there, yeah. like in the same amount or? Um, as long as it measures, a lot of it measures. Oh, okay. okay. Um, but it will, uh, it'll tell you on the package if the neighbors like cup for cup. Okay. Now this has turned up really high. I don't know how to turn it down. So there's a, um, a test I typically do, and I didn't even think to bring it today. Um, um, if you think your jam, now once this comes to a boil, you're supposed to let it boil hard for one minute. I find that sometimes it needs a lot more than one minute. But that's what it says on the sure gel package. Um, so let it boil after a minute five minutes, whatever you think, because you can tell once it starts to thicken up, and you can tell if it's ready. I also forgot to bring some pot. Anyway, um, if you take, you can do it two ways. If you take a plate, and you put it in the freezer ahead of time, just a little saucer, and then take a spoon and dip it in the jam and set it on the plate, it'll cool it off, and you can tell if it's gel. Um, the way I do it is I just put some ice, a couple pieces of ice on a paper towel, and then I put the spoon on top of the ice, and it'll, 
in a couple minutes it'll it'll be gelled or not. You don't get it to a certain temperature? Um, no, because you, you don't have to. It's supposed to just boil for one minute and it's supposed to. I think you can get it to 212 if you don't if you want to do it that way, but I never ever do it that way. Mm -mm. It takes forever to get it. Yes, yeah, it does. So if you don't watch it, it'll boil over. <laughs> and I don't think this is going to do it. Smells good. If you put butter in it, it helps. It'll, it'll stop the foam. It'll yeah. stop the foam and yeah. help. It keeps it from boiling out. Help. Helps. Also, if you put your your wooden spoon across the butter, top like yeah. that, mm -hmm. about that much out of stop it from boiling. Real butter. A lot of times, not uh -huh. every time, but a lot of times. Just, just a teaspoon, teaspoon, a tablespoon, a couple of teaspoons. Okay, so this isn't cooked enough probably, but I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the jars and we'll see what it is. Again, I wasn't smart enough to get... No, I didn't see any. We're going to do, we're going to do directions. Do you want to use that? I think this will be okay. It's not going to be bad. Okay. I might be wrong. <laughs> All right. So, after it's boiled and it's ready to go, take your ladle, take your jar. You want to fill it to about a quarter inch from the top. And this is about the second ring right here. Not making a mess. Now, of course, you can use whatever size you want. Mm. <laughs> and I've recently learned if you do much canning and you probably will hear people say against this but people swear about it and I don't do it because I use new jars all the time but if you have I've always learned if you have these flats once you use them you throw them away but that's not what the new group of people are saying you can use them over and over as long as they still have good sealing here you can continue to use it. I tried it on something I made for myself, and it did work, and it's still sealed. So, save a lot of money that way. Does anybody have any questions while I'm doing this? So on the oh, on the other lids, you're worried about the rubber on the outside of it or the inside little right in here. That yes. stuff, the yeah. red stuff. Okay. Strawberries, a couple of blueberries, a couple of raspberries, and whatever you want to add in there. It doesn't have to just be all the same fruit. Peaches, Peach is awesome. I use a lot of peppers in mine. People really like the spicy ones. Well, I I probably use about it's 
hard to say. It depends on the size. But let's say, let's say you use 20 peppers in your batch of jam. Like I'm going to say jalapeno. I would say use about 10% of them as whole peppers and de-seed the rest of them. And that's for kind of a medium, mild type jam. If you want it spicier, of course, you know, double that amount or triple it. But um, and that's using your five cafes. Yes. Yeah, that's part of that. Now I have found with pepper jams, we use less water. So, so with pepper jams, I found that you have to put all the peppers in the pan and then add a few cups of water, two or three cups of water, not much, and let it cook. Let it just boil for maybe 10 minutes. And then proceed. Don't add any more water because pepper jam has been my arch nemesis. <laughs> Pineapple jalapeno is, if I have trouble with anything, it's going to be that. So, I might have been wrong about how much it makes. But like I said, as long as you have that base, uh, those base quantities down, um, and reading this little pop holder now um, <laughs> will we'll give you that information. Because um, it's a little bit different for all the flavors. But basically, it's all the same thing. You can pretty much transfer it to each flavor. Now, anybody have any other questions? Oh, you're welcome. 
Thank you. 